So I'm here talking to Fiona Russell. My name's Tom Hammond. I'm the conductor of an orchestra called Symphonia Tameza, or as some people say Tameza. We're not too fussy about our vowel sound. Um, but uh, it's a fantastic non-professional orchestra, but one that plays at a very high uh, standard indeed. And in a couple of weeks' time, on the 19th of November, so Saturday, we've got a concert coming up at uh, Holy Trinity Church, Prince Consort Road, South Kensington, very near the Royal Albert Hall or the Royal College of Music, if uh, you know where those places are. Uh, it's at 7.30 in the evening, and if you just Google Symphonia, Tameza, T-A-M-E-S-A, you'll find all the details you need and how to book tickets. And the reason that I'm talking to Fiona is that she will be one, and I think I'm allowed to say the principal, of four solo French horn players. And the piece we're going to play is uh, Schumann's amazing Konzertstück, which is a concerto for four horns uh, and orchestra. And I think that's the basic details of the uh, events done and so the first thing I wanted to ask um, Fiona about was um, uh, the piece itself the music itself perhaps people who might not know the work um, it's not programmed that often might imagine a piece for four horns to be somehow something very light uh, or just purely comedic or purely fireworks of an instrument but I just wondered what you feel about the piece of music itself well, I think you've actually what you've just said covers it, it includes all those aspects. I think that's what makes this such a, a wonderful piece is that it, you know, encompasses all of those those elements. You know, it has something that's fun. It has um, some serious moments. It has, you know, lots of virtuosic fireworks for for the horn and the orchestra. Um, so there really is something a little bit of everything thrown in there. But it is it is a serious work. I think you'd be fair to call it that. Um, but it. It really demonstrates so many characteristics of, of the horn itself, um, which at this time was kind of going through a sort of transitional period of, uh, of the instrument when the piece was, was written, um, because it just about overlapped with when the, the vowels were invented. So the horn had, been, had gone from a, a sort of reasonably straightforward instrument working really without sort of a fully chromatic scale that, as we would know it today. Um, the invention of the vowels meant that suddenly Schumann had this whole range and, and fully chromatic um, scales at his disposal. Um, not all composers, uh, it's like any, anything new. You know, some people were really excited by this and wanted to use it straight away, and some people said, oh, no, no, that's not for us. Um, yeah. Brahms was writing at the same time, and he stuck with the, the natural horn for quite a long time. But Schumann uh, sort of picked it up and, and ran with it, and, uh, you know, we've, we've got this, this amazing work as, as a result of that. It's interesting you mentioned Brahms. I hadn't thought about that aspect. Of course, he was great friends with Schumann and also famously his wife Clara, whom he was really in love with. Um, and Brahms was one of the people, and I think I'm right in saying that Mendelssohn was the other, responsible for introducing Schumann to the music of Johann Sebastian Bach, who at that period in history, this is the, the middle of the 19th century, had been virtually forgotten. People didn't know... Uh, that this incredible composer existed really um, <clears throat> and shortly before he wrote uh, the concert Stuck, Schumann had just discovered Bach and if you listen to the second symphony it's absolutely infused with Bach so it's interesting actually that he was a composer who really looked backwards but was also happy to develop and innovate with the, with the use of these instruments. And I think in the, the form of the work as well, you can see that because Schumann made a study of um, some of Bach's works and some transcriptions of Vivaldi, I think it was, where the, the um, concerto grosso uh, as, a, as a form. Mm. And I think you can, you can see that in, in the concert stuck in the way that he uses the, the soloists as a, a group of players on their own, apart, separate from the orchestra, as well as using them as individual soloists. There's, there's sort of several mm. different strands going on to that, which I think you can look back to his, you know, we know that he studied um, this form in the Baroque, of the Baroque period, and I think you can see, see the influences of yeah. that. Yeah, that's a good, good point. I hadn't thought about Vivaldi, and actually I think customers who enjoyed Vivaldi's <laughs> uh, multiple instrument concerti will love the Schumann as well, because it's, there's not a spare bar as far as I'm concerned. There's not there's, no. there's not a moment in the piece where you might sort of just drift off a little bit. It's or it's it's action, yeah, particularly in, in the in the finale in the last movement. Um, but 
also brilliantly melodic as well, isn't it? I mean, the slow movement yes. for the horns. Beautiful. Now he's got all Beautiful. the notes he can play, yeah. he can write for. Yeah, I mean, that, that, the, the first movement, you, you, you start with this... You don't, you don't really know where it's going. You get this op- the two opening chords from the orchestra and then the horns come bl- blazing in and they play two bars and then they stop. And, and you, if you don't know the piece, you're left thinking, well, where's this going? You know, what are they going to do next? And they sit there for sort of another ten bars having you know, introduced this motive and then do nothing with it. So you're really left waiting for the, for the next moment that the horns come in. And the first movement um, is made up of a lot of fanfare elements as well as some, some melodic lines. And the, the second movement is a, is a beautiful romance. It's, it's got this beautiful tune that's worked with the horns and, and, and various instruments from the orchestra, um, which dives straight into the, to the last movement, which is where the... The virtuosic stuff really comes into it. Yes, <laughs> I was just, and I was going to get to that actually because I think it's fair to say that it's a bit of a, uh, it, it's a piece that horn players love and probably fear in the in the in the same breath. I would <laughs> I would imagine um, to a non brass playing uh, audience, how would you describe the challenges of the of the horn parts? Um, I think it's it's partly the way that. It, the horns are treated. Um, I mean, you, you have you know people will know the Mozart horn concertos and, and the Strauss perhaps, and you have the horn as a solo instrument. But here you have, in effect, you've taken the section, the horn section out of the orchestra. You've put them at the front, and gone. You know, okay, let's see what you could do. And so they've taken on the role of soloists, but they're still working as a section. Um, you know, they're working together. They're working with the orchestra. They're working on their own. Um, so there's that element of it, but. In terms of, I mean, the, the horn has a has a very wide range as an instrument. Anyway, you're talking sort of a good four octaves, and it really goes from one end to the other. Um, you know, the fourth horn part is really down, providing a bass line at times, whilst the first part is 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 way way up in the the extremes of of, of, the, of what the <laughs> instrument really can do. Um, but it's it's a very exciting piece to play, as you said. It's 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 sort of on on the verge of what really was possible at the time yeah, and yeah. perhaps still is now I mean it's, it's one of the, it's an amazing piece to play but it is uh, it's quite a, a challenge I yeah, think for, yeah. for anybody that's it's fair to say and um, will it be will this be one of many performances that you've done of the piece or um, this will be my first performance ah, of the piece okay <laughs> so it's um, it's going to be a particularly particularly fun occasion for me for that um, the other my, my colleagues have, have played it before in various other combinations, but this is this is a first for me. So. Yeah.